Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about something called permutations, which makes use of the fundamental principle of counting. So we have this example here that says, I have five books I want to arrange in a particular order on a shelf. And now this word arrange, when we say arrange, and when we say in a particular order, That's important because when it comes to permutations, this whole idea of arranging items in a particular order, that's significant. We're going to be coming back to that over and over again. So I've got these five books I want to arrange on a shelf. How many different ways can I arrange them? Well, I'm going to approach this problem the same way I approach the other problems that I did using the fundamental principle of counting, which is I'm going to use this box method. So I have these five I want to think of these as like positions on a shelf, and I want to arrange my five books on a shelf. Each one of my boxes, remember, represents a number of choices that I have for items to go in each particular slot. In this case, my items are books. So, how many different choices do I have for books that I can put in this first slot? Well, I have five choices because I've got five books. How many choices do I have for number of books that I can put in this slot. Well, this time I don't have five choices because I've already put one book in that first slot, so I only have four books to choose from. For the same reason here, I no longer can choose the book that I put here and I can't choose the book I put here, which means I have three choices for this slot, two for this slot, and one for this slot. Now I can use my fundamental principle of counting and I can multiply these numbers together, five times four times three times two times one, and that gives me 120. So I can, there are 120 different ways that I can arrange these five books on the shelf. Now take a look at part B. It says, what if I only want to arrange three of my five books on a shelf? All right, well, in that case, I'm only going to have three boxes to represent the three positions that I'm going to be using to arrange my books in. Each box, again, represents the number of choices for each particular position, each particular place on the shelf. The number of choices that I have for this first slot, I'm arranging three of my five books, so I still have five books to choose from. So my number of choices here is five. The number of choices for my second position is going to be four because I've already used one of the books in this slot. And the number of choices for this position is going to be three because I've already used two of those books. And now I'm going to stop because, remember, I'm only interested in arranging three of them. So this is the first book, the second book, and the third book. Again, I use my fundamental principle of counting, and I multiply these numbers together, and that gives me 60 different ways of arranging in a particular order these, arranging in a particular order three of my five books on my shelf. So this example is an illustration of what's called a permutation. Whenever you want to know how many ways there are of arranging, arranging specifically in order some number of items, that's called a permutation. And the important thing to remember about permutations is that with permutations, order matters. And once again, we're going to keep coming back to this idea of with permutations, order matters. We're going to come back to that over and over and over again because uh, as we're going to see uh, in a little while, there are certain types, certain other types of situations in which order does not matter. With permutations, however, the order does matter. The order that you put the books in the shelf matters. All right, so there's one more example here in your notes. It says seven flute players are performing in an ensemble. And part A says, the names of all seven players are listed in the program in random order. How many different ways could the players' names be listed? That is, how many different ways could they be arranged in the program? Well, I have a way of figuring this out, which is I draw my boxes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven boxes, one for each of the flute players. And I want to know how many different ways are there that I could arrange in order these players' names. Well, the first, the, the name that goes in this first slot, how many different choices 
do I have for the name that goes here? Well, I've clearly got seven choices because I have seven flute players. How many different choices do I have for the name that goes in the second slot? Well, this is only going to be six choices. I only have six choices because I already used one of my names in this first slot. And so on down the line here, I've got five choices for this spot, four for this one, three for this one, two for this one, and one for this one. I use my fundamental principle of counting, and I multiply each of these numbers together, and I get 5,040, which tells me that there are 5,040 ways that these seven players' names could be arranged in the program. Now, there are three more parts to this example, parts B, C, and D, and I'm going to leave that for you. I'm going to leave those parts for you to do, and we'll take a look at this example uh, tomorrow in class.